What's up guys, I'm Danica. Welcome back to my YouTube channel. So last week I was extremely ambitious and I told myself and I promised myself that going forward I wanted to post at least one video a week on my YouTube channel. So here I am, here's this week's. Last week I posted three videos and I was trying some new topics and some new formats. I'm still not sure where I'm landing, but I do know that it felt really, really good last week to post content that makes me happy. So here I am again. I wanted to talk a little bit about what I usually get up to on the weekends in Hong Kong, especially over the past few months when we've been in the situation where no one can really travel. Never in my life would I ever have imagined that I would be going through any kind of travel lockdown in the confines of a city. Maybe it's because I grew up in New York and I'm culturally American and when you're American, you can like, you have a whole country to roam around. My friend David says that as Americans, we're used to being like marbles in a big box where you know, in New York, we can like go to Boston, we can go to DC, we can go to Philly, we can like go to Chicago. The, the possibilities are almost endless. But because I've been living in Hong Kong for 18 months now, and we have sort of been in lockdown since January, way before the American lockdown, I have not left this city since last December, since I came back to Hong Kong after Christmas. This is the longest I have been in one city, wow, for, since 1995. And over the past few weeks and months, with the closure of restaurants at night, with the closure of gyms, I belong to two gyms and both are closed because gov the government has mandated that all gyms and recreational facilities be closed. I've sort of come up with this cobbled together routine that I do for my own mental health on the weekends. Now it's not ideal because I do feel like I am missing a basic element of exercise <laughs> that I know over the past few months have really changed the way that I feel. If you've been watching my channel for a while, you'll know that over the past year and a half, I've been on a personal wellness journey where I've lost about 60 pounds and have really tried to change and like really pivot my outlook on health and wellness. It's something that I never really paid attention to before last June. But the lockdown has really thrown really thrown me for a loop on that one. I don't really know how to motivate to incorporate exercise into my daily routine without the structure of having a personal trainer, um, having a gym to go to, like a place to go to. I didn't realize how important that's become to me and having a sense of accountability for reaching goals and milestones in my journey. So the past few months has actually been really, really difficult for me psychologically. In the beginning of lockdown, I did find that if I didn't structure my weekends even a little bit, I would wake up in the morning and then just sort of do nothing. And then all of a sudden it would be Sunday night and I wouldn't know where like the weekend had gone and I didn't feel rested. I didn't feel like I accomplished anything for myself and it was very frustrating. So what I've been doing over the past few months is every single Saturday and Sunday, the first thing I do in the mornings is get up, get ready, like either put on makeup or don't put on makeup. Like, I don't know. Usually I just wear like shorts and like a t-shirt or a hoodie and I leave my apartment. <laughs> that is crucial. Leaving my apartment has become one of like the most important things that I have to force myself to do on like a Saturday and a Sunday. So every Saturday and Sunday, I grab my Smithson diary. It is the thing that I treat myself to once a year. I love Smithson notebooks so much, but they are so expensive. And don't get me wrong, I love moleskin notebooks and I love a yellow legal pad. Anybody who knows me knows that I can only like do work 
on the yellow legal pad. <laughs> so I have like tons that I brought from the States over to Hong Kong. But for my leisure writing, I do prefer a Smithson pale blue paper. It is seriously like the smoothest paper I've ever written on. Anyway, that's like total notebook nerd territory. Every Saturday and Sunday, I will grab my Smithson diary and I will head to a local coffee shop. Sometimes I go a little bit further afield, but mostly I'll go to like a local coffee shop in my neighborhood or like within like a 20 or 30 minute walk. And I will sit down and I will get a coffee and I will do my pages. Now, if you're a fan of any like productivity, guru type people on YouTube, you probably have heard of the concept of doing pages. It is not a new concept. It is something that has been around forever. It's basically the idea of sitting down every morning and writing something. I was introduced to the idea of doing pages, not in a journaling sense, but during a writer's workshop I attended a few years ago. There is a great organization in the UK called Arvon, A-R-V-O-N, and I discovered them just by Googling around a few years ago. I was looking for a writer's workshop to go on during like a vacation from my real job. And I was specifically looking for a writer's workshop where I could learn a little bit about writing fiction. My entire career, I have written nonfiction. So I've been a reporter, I've been a features writer, I've written a lot of profiles, I've been a blogger, I've written about food and fashion, but I've never written fiction, like not even like in high school or college. I never ever took a creative writing class. But for a little while, a couple of years ago, I thought about writing a young adult novel. And I have like a bunch of ideas for YA novels, but I never, I never ended up doing it. Anyway, so I really wanted to go take a course and learn about the technique of writing fiction. And I wasn't sure if I, I could write fiction. So I signed up for this course at Arvon. Arvon runs extremely affordable courses. And that was part of the reason why I chose to go to like the countryside in England for an entire week with no Wi-Fi to learn about fiction writing. Now, obviously I never wrote a YA book, so I didn't really succeed on that front. But what I did take away from the writer's workshop that was probably the most important takeaway for like my life was one of the exercises we did every single morning at the writer's workshop was the poetry tutor. There were three tutors on the course and one of them is a poet. Every single morning we would sit down and that tutor would throw a line at us or throw a concept at us. And for 10 to 20 minutes every morning, we would have to do pages. It was a stream of consciousness form of writing where you just go. Don't think too much, don't obsess over it too much, don't plan too much, don't outline, but just write. Like, write straight forward for like 10 to 20 minutes. And this, for me, was probably one of the most surprising and enlightening exercises that I've ever done in my writing career. You see, I never thought that I had an imagination. And I know that sounds really, really strange, but even when I was a little kid, when we would like play pretend in the schoolyard or, you know, play house or, you know, draw things or come up with stories, I never felt that I could. I, I was always obsessed with legend and magic and fairy tales. Some of my favorite books growing up were Roald Dahl books, which are so fantastical. And I also was obsessed with witches in general. And I, and I loved King Arthur stories and all the stories about the Knights of the Round Table. But even as a young person, I always felt incredibly grounded in reality. And I still do. People kind of make fun of me because I am like sometimes way too realistic and that can become cynical a little bit. But doing pages at this writer's workshop really opened my eyes to what's possible when you stop thinking so much. When you turn off that part of your brain, that's like the conscious, grounded planning part, and just write. Write exactly what comes to mind. It almost like opened an entire new like synapse or creative channel in my mind. So since the lockdown started, I've realized that I need a moment every week to check in with myself. So over the past few months, every Saturday and Sunday, I sit down and I do my real life pages, which means when I'm sitting in the coffee shop, I will just write. Sometimes I can write like 10, 20, 25 pages in one sitting. And it's not straightforward journaling. Like I'm not recounting every single detail of every single thing that happened 
that entire week. Like that's why I don't do pages every single day. I do it once a week. It's very top line stuff. The things that I remember, the things that stuck out to me, the, the moments that I can't stop thinking about for one reason or another. And I try to capture that on paper. I don't really read it over again, but in a way it's so cathartic just to write it out and to get it out. I also make sure to include any reactions I perceived myself having, so how I was feeling at the time, how I feel now about something, how I reacted at the time, if there's anything that I would have changed about how I reacted, and that really helps me sort of close the chapter on every single week. It also helps me to set myself up for success in the week going forward. Now that sounds like really, really hokey, but that is something that I found to be so helpful when the concept of time and the feeling of the calendar year has been so warped. Hong Kong went into semi-lockdown in January, right after Chinese New Year. And I can't believe that September is basically next week. The end of the year is just around the corner. This year has flown by, but at the same time, it has also crawled by. And without this weekly journaling and these, these weekly records of how I felt and what a roller coaster emotional year this has been, when physically and action wise, like nothing has really changed. My life has essentially not changed, but the inside of my mind has completely changed how I feel and how I feel like I've changed as a person. It, I'm like a totally different person than I was nine months ago. This is a record that eventually one day I will look back at and I will read and, and, and understand what kind of a transformation has happened in 2020. Anyway, that is my rambly random video of the day. Now, to be fair, after I do my pages, it is not all introspection and thoughtfulness for the rest of the day. I do try to get my pages out of the way so I can do something fun and random in the middle of the day. For example, yesterday, after I did my pages, I went to a neighborhood in Hong Kong called Diamond Hill because I read on the internet that there is a restaurant in a mall in Diamond Hill that is themed around Kim Jong-un as Captain America. I know that makes no sense, but it's a Korean restaurant that has a bunch of art on the walls and like paintings and cartoons and a giant statue in the front of the restaurant the entire restaurant is themed like a bunker, like a bomb shelter. And the theme is Kim Jong-un, the North Korean leader, wearing a Captain America costume. I know that makes no sense. I'm gonna insert some clips now. Now I'm at the Kim Jong-un Captain America theme restaurant. I'm obsessed, I have to eat here. After I had lunch at the Kim Jong-un Captain America restaurant, I left the mall and I went across the street. So across the street from this giant mall is a nunnery. And I believe it is a Buddhist temple that is run by nuns, which is, and it's, it's beautiful. It is so peaceful and so calm. And around the nunnery, the city has built a, a, a huge a garden. And so I spent some time there and honestly it was, the most peaceful and chill place I've been in Hong Kong in 18 months and I loved it so much. I will put some footage here. So that was my weekend and I'm making this video because I really, really do want to keep on making YouTube videos regularly. So I'm gonna make an effort to do at least one every single week, if not more. Thank you so much for watching this video. Please like and subscribe if you please, and I will see you next week.